this is along the same uh, lines of how we compare doing close air support in fixed wing aircraft versus rotary. Casmo, were you a uh, JTAC as well, or did you just do the airborne stuff? Did you ever call in strikes in general? I mean, yes. Of, I mean, I have in the sense, like not in combat, we would do a training. So I was here at, um, at the, the artist formerly known as Fort Bragg. Now it's Fort Liberty. Uh, but it had Pope Air Force Base right next door and they had A-10s. So it was not uncommon in my early kind of years of flying that we would go out on the range and the A-10 guys were constantly just, I, I think they always took off with gun rounds and they would just always shoot and then they'd go do something else. So it wasn't uncommon to go out and hear them on the range. You know, you'd call range control, get hooked up with JTAC and then you'd be lazing for them and talking them on and stuff like that. And we used to practice it quite a bit for within ourselves. The Army doesn't have JTACs um, except in very like the special operations guys, those guys will get signed off. And I know of a few pilots who they've kind of done the thing where they, you know, they send them to get signed off as JTAC. But the problem with being a JTAC is you, it's just like being a pilot in the sense that you, there's certain minimums, right? So the JTACs have a certain minimum that they have to hold. How can you do that? You know, the, our Air Force JTACs have a hard enough time maintaining, you know, their, their currency. Um, everyone that I've ever talked to. So trying to then do that across the army. So we never had, quote unquote, JTACs or FAC A's, but I would say that we certainly train to a standard that push comes to shove. We could absolutely do it. Um, it wasn't, it's not, I mean, it's not challenging. I mean, especially if you're already a pilot, because a lot of that stuff is just pilot stuff, right? It's just situational awareness. It's getting somebody zoomed in on the right spot. You know, I think that's the hardest part. The hardest part of, of doing anything it, it, from our perspective, dealing with jets and then for ground guys dealing with us is getting you to look at the right spot. Once you figure yeah. that out, the rest is just like, you know, every JTAC I ever heard, they're like, they get you zoned in on the target, and they're like, okay, stand by for the nine line. They just rattle a bunch of crap off just to make it legal. But they've already showed yeah. you where the target is. And that's how it generally was for us. Yeah, especially yeah, in never, the digital age. Go ahead, I remember yeah. like looking at my AT flare, you know, right on the target, and then I would look outside completely tumbleweed myself <laughs> wait a minute yeah. <laughs> like which way is the flare looking you know i mean uh then of course you get the, uh, the helmet that the helmet mount yeah cueing systems kids nice these days that. kids, kids these, these days they with their fancy struggle. helmets dude we carry <laughs> yeah. binoculars we carry binoculars yeah. i tried to use them kids once these like, days I'm i like, did that once yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what is it yeah <laughs> exactly it's like zing. ridiculous i'll yeah. get it next time yeah yeah, yeah. that's hard because they want you i mean being able to visually see what you're going to attack or, or overfly or whatever is a real nice warm and fuzzy to have. But Casmo, I've seen a lot of, um, your, your, your Apache videos, which, you know, guys check out Casmo's channel because that's a lot of good DCS Apache videos, but you, you talk about, you know, just watching, I don't know if a lot of that's close air support, but just posturing and positioning, you know, we either talk about keyhole cast where you're different points relative to the target or you're in the wheel. And as far as low threat, close air support, which is the majority of what we've been doing for the last 20 years, you're in the wheel. You're in an orbit around the target because, you know, we're, that's that's where we need to be. That's the way the JTAC can see us. And that's the way we can see the target. But you guys do a little bit different, right? I mean, it's you're not orbiting necessarily over the target. It, is it depends. That, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, th there are certainly times where we've orbited the target. It just kind of depends on what the target is. Right. So if you're um, typically if we were doing something with special operations guys and they're hitting a the house or they're hitting something very specific, then we would definitely pick up an orbit because that way you can look for squirters. Right. Guys that are shooting out the, the back and stuff like that um, or looking for threats coming from outside in. So we would definitely pick up an orbit. But if it was something more like intense, we're probably going to hang out like behind you know, behind and above the the ground force because that way we, we're not catching anything. Because again, for you guys, you're flying so high, you can be at those different angles and it's probably not much of a threat. But if I'm on the other side of the target and those dudes are just lighting it up as they are tend to do, there's stuff spraying everywhere. I don't want to be anywhere oh, near Oh yeah, that. crossfire. So, you guys are actually, yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, it's it's something to worry about, right? So if I'm on the behind him, I can then also see where a lot of that fire is going, especially at night. I mean, at night, it's easier to find mm -hmm. targets because they can shoot infrared beams. They can shoot tracers. You know, it looks like a, you know, a, a Pink Floyd concert sometimes. There's just <laughs> way too much stuff. I'm like, all right, I need you to like stop. Just get one laser out. Um, but yeah, being behind, because then too for us, and I imagine it's probably the same for you. If you're doing something close to the friendlies, 
coming in from behind them or over the shoulder or a little bit at an oh, angle yeah, is no. just safer, yeah. right? Um, yeah. and, and it gives them a warm and fuzzy because, you know, sometimes the guys on the ground, they don't really understand the weapon system. Right. And so they think that, you know, stuff's just going to like fall out and land on them. It's like, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm still behind you, but I'm pointing past you. Like it's, it's okay that the rockets are shooting now or the missile or whatever. Um, but yeah, so to answer, well, we actually question, avoid it, it that. Just kind of depends. No, we, we don't, I mean, especially with laser guided bombs and stuff, you don't want to be over the dudes because there's too much of a risk that the lasers, you, you know, the, that laser spot, yeah. you know, you want to be off, off axis. Right. You got your stem and, and yeah. And especially with strafe, you know, I mean, uh, T Bear, great example. You know, if you're going in over the JTAC's head, that's bad. I mean, that's so there's a, there's a, that's a, that's an interesting consideration, um, especially being the speeds that we're flying. You know, we don't have the ability to, you know, adjust on the target run. Now, A10 can, you know, they can right. do multiple strafes, but for us, it's like, hey, once we're in, that's it. Yeah, you know, you're we're committed. not, we're not, yeah. we're, we're, one and done. And, and that's an interesting point you made with, with these high speed guys. So would they have you, where was it a consideration like, hey, we don't want the thump, 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 thump to ruin our element of surprise because they don't know we're there a lot of times. You know, we're flying so high yeah. that. Um, yeah, I remember a raid in particular in Missoula, um, 2006 time frame. We were working with the Rangers and they were driving up to hit this target. And their plan was to get, you know, I don't know, a mile or so from this house in the middle of town. It was at night and they were going to dismount and walk up to the house and raid it. And so they wanted us close on the approach and then they said hey when we get like three k's which i was flying kai was small you know small aircraft you're not making a lot of noise a kilometer or two out they're not going to hear you or even if they do they're so used to you being around you know it's like there's helicopters so what there's always helicopters um but like at the 3k mark i think is when they want us to break off so then we kind of just picked up a wide orbit and uh put the sensors in on the target area and it, like generally you'd have like okay one guy look at the target one guy look at the ground force and just kind of keep track and make sure that everything's going well. Um, and then once they uh, walked in, in fact, it was really cool because we were at the perfect spot where they went up to the door and put charges on it and blew the door in. And that was like our cue because they were like, it's it's game on now, right? So then we could just zip in and then we picked up kind of a tight orbit of, you know, right overhead essentially. Um, but yeah, that's absolutely a consideration. And then depending on what you're flying, if you're flying Apache, you're going to want to be a little bit further because it's a noisier aircraft. But it's also got better sensors, so you could see a little bit better as well. We were we were watching. I watched I don't know, three or four guys playing an IUD in Iraq, and we had Laser Maverick we wanted to use on them. But back then the RRE was a little a little tighter, and uh, they had these Apaches kept trying to come in on them, but they would hear the helicopters coming, and they would disperse. And we I mean we we burned like three tanks of gas just watching this evolution of them digging a little getting scared because the apaches were cruising up and we never got any clearance to employ on them because the ROE was pretty tight yeah. but uh but yeah up where we're at they couldn't they couldn't hear us we were basically right over them just watching them with the flare casmo with i mean I'm, I'm sure the apache less so but you know the kiowa was it a real consideration as far as altitudes and um it's, speeds as far as auto rotation like what happens if we lose an engine here how are what's what's kind of your are you just accepting the risk as you're yeah i think you just you just accept the risk um and it's funny you bring that up because like when i went to fly apaches you know dual engine and the instructors were always like oh you need to stay above this airspeed you know safe single engine airspeed i'm like bro i just spent you know, like 10 years <laughs> flying a single engine aircraft at 50 feet with dudes shooting at me like I'm not really worried about losing an engine. Like it's just not a consideration. Um, yeah. So I think you just kind of assume the risk and we used to practice um, doing a low level auto, you know, come in at 50 feet, 90 knots. And, you know, and back when I went through flight school, they'd, I don't know if they still do it or well, obviously Kai was gone, but I don't know if they kept doing it, but you know, they roll the throttle off and you just yank it back and just auto it down right to the ground. Um, so it was kind of one of those where, yeah, it, it could happen. And if it does, you know, hopefully your muscle memory is still there and, um, you get through it. But yeah, Kyle guys like to fly low mainly because our sensors suck so bad. You know, they were really old. Um, they weren't designed to look at three dudes on the side of the road at three K's, you know, they're, lo they're meant to look for Russian horde coming through the Fulda gap in the early nineties. Right. So, so, um, we kind of had to use the Mark one eyeball. In fact, generally we didn't even use the site during the day. 
Um, you know, you would be mainly scanning just with your eyeballs and looking for stuff that's out of out of ordinary, right? I remember uh, looking on the top of a hill that was overlooking a road in Afghanistan, and we were like, "Hey, look, there's a water bottle there. Like somebody's been here recently." And so that became like a point that we would check. Wow. Like, that's probably like who else would be up here? You know, like there's no other reason to be up here. Yeah. So this is probably a bad dude. Wow. Um, so it's little things like that that you learn to look for as a scout pilot. Um, and you couldn't find that with sensors, you know, even with an Apache with the TADs, you just, you would have just never noticed it. Um, and then with the Apache, you, the sights were so much better. And so you would, and you would fly a little bit higher and, um, and use those to see, see more. And it was harder to see out the side. You could still do it, but it wasn't as easy with the Kiowa. You wouldn't have a door on, you know, you'd just be hanging out the side, looking around. So, yeah. Did you ever employ the M4 out the side of the door? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I did it a couple times. <laughs> Um, I had some guys who did it a lot, um, and were really good at it. Like, I don't want to tell some of the stories, but they were pretty good at it. Um, but yeah, I remember doing it one time at night and it was ridiculous because the flash of the muzzle, you couldn't really see what you were aiming at. Like I knew there was a guy there and I kept shooting and I couldn't see. So finally I had my wingman, like, like the targets over here. So my wingman and I would be up and above them to the left. And I put the sight on the target on the guy. And so I could see the rounds hitting. And so I'm just like yelling over the mic to him. I'm like, left, 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 right, right, up, 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 you know, <laughs> trying to correct his rounds. And this, I mean, poor guy, he was a bad dude. Um, but he's running between these little trees, probably about as big around as my mic, and just like trying to hide behind him. And then he'd run to the next <laughs> one, hide and stuff. And, you know, eventually, away from the cans. Got him. but yeah, essentially, that's exactly what it felt like. Um, wow. You know, and it's morose, and we can sort of laugh about it just because that's, that's the world wow. that we grow up in and stuff. But, yeah. you know, that's the reality. But yeah, no, absolutely. Shooting the M4 at the, I, I, how can you not? Like just to just That's do crazy. it for fun. I mean, we used to go out and shoot, you know, just practice. But uh, but coming back from that sun? engagement, what's up? Did it have a night sun? Did it have like a spotlight you could put on any of these people while you're shooting? No, no. You you were wearing goggles and just you know just. Oh, and, wow. I mean, guys would have like um like the red dot sights. You know, you'd put that kind of crap on the rifle, but you, it's you didn't really aim you just kind of like at least for me you just kind of felt right you know you're like okay that's good you know and you, again you'd practice enough that you'd get a, a good concept i'm sure just like strafing in a jet like i'm sure you kind of knew like okay this is this feels right you know stuff like say that. hello to my little friend <laughs> the aussies liked it when we'd shoot our pistol out i don't know why but they laughed if we would ever shoot our <laughs> pistol out the side which of course we never did, you did shoot your real. pistol Oh yeah, oh. no, not for like combat, like just for fun, you know, just like shoot the pistol. I don't know why. <laughs> There's no Again, like bullet accountability when you come back. Like, hey, uh, you had There's only so much. There's only so much. There's an al- you have an allotment <laughs> to train with. I was training. I was wow. Yeah. There, thanks, Doug. Uh, for legal reasons, this <laughs> yeah. is a joke. <laughs> for legal reasons, this is a joke. Yeah. Wow. Uh, all right. Any reattacks on that, uh, Gonky? No, sir. Casmo, that's awesome, dude. We will all forever be humbled in your presence when it yeah. comes to this stuff. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, that's, that's we, yeah.